To simplify the concepts of shifting, we've taken the, the wheel and uh, cassette out. We placed it with a simple stud here, just to show the chain as it shifts back and forth uh, to get a concept of what, what's happening. It'll make kind of a funny noise, but it, it does simplify things. We're here actually in 10th in gear. 10th, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. That would be our first gear. It's about 32 millimeters, give or take, uh, between the full range here. All of our sprockets are in between there. The upper pulley in our system here, we shift there, we can start seeing our upper pulley is what's guiding the chain to the next cog. So the indexing feature is moving it a distinct amount, and uh, that's what gives us our indexing. It will stop. With the limit screws here, we'll stop it in the extreme innermost position and the other limit screw in the most extreme outer position, the H screw. And that's a simplified view of how, uh, how the system's going to work. So let's now try it with the, uh, the rear wheel in place. We have our gears in place. Uh, let's discuss now the adjustment of the rear derailleur. Uh, we want that guide pulley, the upper pulley, to be stopping in uh, two positions. We want it to stop all the way out on the outermost, that's our high gear. The H screw will, will control the outer motion, the stopping of the derailleur in the uh, outermost position. The innermost is controlled by the L screw, uh, our lowest gear here, L for low. Uh, we want it to stop at that screw there, not go beyond into the spokes. Uh, and then the gears in between are controlled by the shifting mechanism, the uh, indexing in our, uh, our shift lever. Uh, so there's two different aspects. There's the limit screws, and then there's the indexing in between. And the first thing we want to start with is actually the H, the high gear. The H screw here uh, has positioned the cog underneath the sprocket and this one's actually set pretty good but we should we should try it in two extremes and see how it uh, how it sounds. What we have here is I would call the ambient sound of the chain, the steel chain meshing on the cog. So let's let's give a listen to this this uh, little symphony here. And that's the normal the normal sound. So let's let's try a couple of things. We're gonna purposely loosen the H screw, and that that pulley is creeping to the outside. It's actually now misaligned. Let's okay. Do we hear the the rumbling there? Kind of a bass sound. That uh, that's an extra noise. If I gently push. You can get rid of that rumbling here. Here's the, the rumbling noise. If I pull the cable just a little bit, it, it goes away. So we have now messed up. We have, have uh, positioned our pulley outside too far. Let's, let's put it back underneath again and listen to that nice sound. But what, what would happen if this were too tight, if the H screw were down? too far. Let's well, we get some some rattling noise and the rattling is that the chain is trying to shift to the next cog. So that's that noise there. We have now gone too far. I back off a little bit but can we still hear it? Keep keep loosening. Better. There, that's quiet. I'll take my finger and pull the cable. It drops down quickly. We're going to call that a, a good setting. It is a good idea at this point to have this cable rather slack. We don't want it tight. Uh, it could cause problems in our shifting but not be related to our, our limit screw. So. A nice loose cable is, o is okay at this time. 
So that is our, uh, our H screw, the high gear setting. We're now going to look at the uh, other extreme close to our spokes. That's the L screw for our low, our low gear. Uh, so let's, let's shift, shift on up. And we are going to have to use our, uh, our shift lever for this. We're going to get it all the way up. Now notice we've gone to the second to highest, second to um, inner position rather. Um, right near it and we're going to shift one more quick. It does seem to shift up there nicely. Uh, we do want to be very careful we're not uh, in a position we can overshift that. And something I like to test is by shoving the knuckle, the joint, the lower joint of the derailleur here, shove that and if we stop motion right here, can we see that the chain is nearly ready to fall off? It's practically going to shift into the spokes. If that were to happen, let's give it, if that were to, to shift into the spokes, uh, the bike is going to come to a grinding halt. So this is a case where the index shifting, the thumb motion here, seems to stop. But if a person were very uh, forceful with their thumb and shoved that a little bit further, it could ride up into the spokes. So for us, we're going to take that L screw and tighten it, say a quarter turn. Now let's see if we've over tightened it. Nope, it still shifts quickly. We will know that we've over tightened the, uh, the L screw uh, let's go ahead and, and do that. Just to make a point here, let's give it a whole turn tighter. See what can happen. Still making it. If you notice, it's barely making it there. It's working at making it. It's shifting back. I think we've gone too far with the L screw. Let's split the difference there. There we are. So we have an adequate L screw setting, H screw setting. Now it's time to move on to the indexing gears in between. So the first thing we've done again is set our limit screws. Time to set the gears in between. And that will be done by using our shift lever here. Uh, we can pedal and get one click back and forth. Uh, we will be fine-tuning that with what's called the barrel adjuster, uh, which effectively lengthens again, lengthens, I can pull out there. It's as if I'm lengthening my housing, takes slack out. Uh, that will cause a, a more inward shift of that pulley. If I screw the barrel adjuster into the body, uh, that will, uh, will effectively shorten the, uh, the housing and uh, give me more slack. So let's first have a look at where, where we are now. One click with the lever gives me one gear. And uh, that seems pretty reasonable. It does make it. Uh, this is difficult maybe to see. Let's see if we can pan in a little bit better. The uh, guide pulley is actually a little bit outboard here. And we do get a funny noise. Again, I'm going to just gently push. See that? It, it really tends to quiet down. So we want that pulley to move inward more. We want to take up slack. And taking up slack, this barrel adjuster coming out. And we're going to... That extra rumbling has gone away. So one click One click at the, uh, at the shift lever is giving me one gear and back. Let's see what happens if we keep taking up the slack, keep turning the barrel adjuster out. Let's keep coming out, out, out this way. 
And let's see what kind of problems we can have. We'll go all the way down. Let's focus on that noise a second. It is a noise, but if we look, the pulley is now actually too far inboard. We're trying to actually shift. The bike is trying to shift itself. Well, the limit screw cannot control this. This is on the second cog. This is controlled by our, our, our tension, our cable housing length here. So I've taken out too much slack. I need to return. Let's, let's give a listen to some more gears and see if... Yes, definitely a problem, a problem shift. So we've gone too far, we've taken the slack out too much, we need to come back in to our barrel adjuster, give more slack to the system. And we have a reasonable setting here. And last year we make it. Seems a reasonable uh, setting for our test ride. We may need to do some fine tuning a little bit later. Uh, for any given system, there may be a range of uh, settings at our barrel adjuster. Sometimes two or three quarter turns, maybe more, uh, that it's acceptable shifting. We certainly have a, a good range here. So we're going to give this a, a, a test ride. A good setting here to see uh, see how it's going to work once we're actually out on the trail. An often overlooked adjustment uh, is called the body angle, and uh, many derailleurs have this. The B screw here controls the position of the body relative to the cogs. If it's tightened, it draws away. If it loosens, it gets closer. So depending on the size of the cog. We want it fairly close. If it's too close, we can actually end up with a rubbing. We can see actually here, these scar marks indicate that we were probably too close. Let's shift up the largest bracket. We don't want to, almost getting a rumbling sound. We go backwards there. Let's, there we go. We definitely have made a problem. And it's an opportunity to learn that our upper pulley is smashing and grinding into that largest sprocket. Not appropriate. We need to pull back and see that it's quieter. So to, to pull back is tightening the B screw. So let's put that back where it was. We're clearing, we're not rumbling, still shifting well. Uh, if you go too, too far, you will have the chain simply very, very far away. The pulleys will get further away from the sprocket and that can make it, uh, make it a sloppier shift. So we have no rumbling, but still good shifting. Uh, our B screw is now adequately set.